Welcome to the Third Generation Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Eric and Rob. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. This is the third generation wrestling podcast. 3GW on this Saturday evening. Just got done watching AEW's presentation in 2020 of All Out. I am your host, Mr. Eric, joined by my co host, Mr. Rob. How you doing, sir? You know, man, after the pay per view, we'll be just watching the high. Looking forward to talking about this one. I don't know if I've ever s- heard you say, I'm all right. <laughs> well, look, I don't want to say too much. That's why we do the podcast. But yeah, I, I, we'll get into it. We are also joined by our guest host, MJ Book of the Countdown Podcast. Uh, how are you doing, sir? Oh, boy. This, um, I, I'm of puddles. This is going to be interesting. This was a show. <laughs> that could, oh, that kind of show. It, it, it was, it was, it was a show. I mean, I got look. A lot of the matches felt like running in place. They felt well. I, I don't even know if I can use the word "felt" because I didn't feel anything for the majority of the night. Like leading up to it. I mean, I had the freaking red carpet thing queued up while I was grilling. I was getting in the, in, in the mood. I even had my TV outside with me grilling. And you know, I was getting hyped up for the show tonight. And then, man, the show starts. And I'm like, okay, that was all right. And, you know, all right. And then I'm like waiting for the big wow moment. And, yeah, didn't really get it tonight. It didn't, didn't, nothing was like, oh. Well, there were some O's. <laughs> yeah, and I had some wow moments, but they weren't like the good wow. Yeah, there's yeah, mm-hmm. some O's, not good ones. No, I mean, oh, well, yeah, like compared to the first double or nothing, compared to the first all out, and then you watch this, you go, huh. What happened? What went wrong here? Not to give away too much, but not to, not to say that the whole show was bad, because I it that'd be unfair. But I was severely underwhelmed by the time you know the signature went up and the show was over. I was like, eh, don't know if I got you know. My money's worth, but okay. All right. That being said, let's just get into it. And so with with all the stuff I had going on before this show started, I, I, I was I was watching the, the, the two red carpets that they showed, which was interesting. I actually like how they do that. Get you ready for the show if you have the time to, you know, Put it on, or just have it on in the background to kind of get you to move for what you're about to see. Did either of you get to check out the buy-in? Unfortunately, I did not. Uh, I didn't plan my day well. My plan was to be over here by the time the buy-in started, but things came up out of my control. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get here until time for the main card, so I did not see anything that happened on the buy-in. And Rob was my connection to watching it, so I thankfully didn't watch anything. The first match was Joy Janela with Sonny Kiss versus Sir Pentico with Luther. I don't know what the hell Luther is supposed to be. He looks like a fake ass bullseye from Daredevil. I, I don't even know who Sir Pentico is. Joy Janela won 
whatever. And then we had uh, Dark Order 3 and 4, a.k.a. John Silver and Alex Reynolds versus Private Party, which, damn, I was like, damn, I, I like Private Party. I, I don't want to miss one of their matches, but like, again, I was just having to get everything done. So by the time the main card started, I was good to go. Uh, Private Party won by pinfall. I'm sure their match was better than the first one. I've never seen a bad private party match. That makes me sad that I miss them wrestling. So, cause I, I enjoy them. The, the whole gimmick, their interest music, the way they wrestle. Those two young guys, they're going to be uh, big stars one day. So, are you grading these? No. I'm just giving, because it was on the show. So, I'm just you know informing our listeners. Because okay. I'm sure there's people that listen that don't watch. Especially with a show like this where you have to drop $50. So I'm just making sure that I give every every result even if I didn't get to see it. I did just look at Luther. What the hell, man? The fake-ass bullseye. Yep. That a terrible-ass bullseye. And with a name like Luther, like, you would think it's something intimidating. It's not. Well, I think that's like the Lex Luthor ball thing. <laughs> he looks like Ralphus from WCW. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're right. <laughs> Which, the way Jericho used Ralphus was like, okay, yeah, I get it. You totally just nailed that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the first thing went through my head. It was Ralphus. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh so then we go to the main card which this match originally was on the uh buy-in but i guess people campaign online you know you, you keyboard warriors and they got on the main show Brit breaker versus big swole with tooth and nail match Whew. i had high a high well, I shouldn't say hi. I had medium expectations because they told us it was cinematic. So I said, okay. Most people hate the dentist. And you got Big Swole. It's been a kind of a funny, you know, storyline. I said, okay, it could go well. It started off okay. I liked it in the beginning. You know, we had Reba at the desk and pretending not to know who Big Swole was. And, you know... I like that interaction, and then I like the way they introduced Britt Baker hitting, her, hitting Big Swole over the head with one of her diplomas. And then the action when they went outside and fighting like in the dumpster and everything. All that was cool. When they started introducing like the the dental tool tools and the, the drill, like... I don't know. Britt Baker's acting was terrible, in my opinion. I thought that, you know, they took too long. Everything was, uh, everything, like, like when she had the drill, I mean, you just knew, like, she's going to miss. Oh, look, she missed. Oh, she drilled the chair instead of Big Swole. Like, it was all telegraphed. That's the word I was looking for. Everything was telegraphed. If you ever watched a wrestling match, you knew what was coming before it even happened. And that's probably the biggest negative I would give this outside of the finish, which was lackluster to say the least. This is all, this was almost as bad as AJ Styles being caught underneath the freaking barbell and money in the bank. Two seconds of laughing gas and you're asleep. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to give this match a C-. minus. Rob? Well, I'm going to be real, and I'm going to give it an F. <laughs> all right? Look, man. First of all, you know I don't like these cinematic things. It's just... The sport is called wrestling. Oh, it's not, shit. It's not called, <laughs> man, look. Bill <laughs> walks into the dental office like, like she has an appointment or something. There's a lady sitting behind the desk. And then like you, you describe the rest of it. 
And I'm sorry, it was just stupid. Seriously. <laughs> and then, you know, you talked about the spot with the drill, right? Well, this wasn't like a dentist drill. This was like something you'd buy at Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like to, to drill holes in wood, like like when you're building your deck. It was just stupid. The, the acting was bad, like you said, for, uh, of Britt Baker. I knew that because she's a dentist, and when I heard it was in the dental office, I knew there would be spots with, with dental tools, and, and there was a, a segment where uh, Britt Baker brought out a needle and accidentally stuck herself. Oh, God, that was terrible. You could yeah. see her pushing it down the entire time. <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> awful. A, a, a complete waste of time and sadly a sign of things to come. So an F for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, my AEW women's division doesn't let me down. <laughs> <laughs> And that's oh, what we got to see again. Congratulations, AEW. Your women's division still sucks ass. This was a fucking F. <laughs> and not only was this an F, I gave this an F, and Rob saw me do it, and I said it. I gave this an F about, what was it, 20 seconds in? I graded it 20 seconds in at the, at the damn, uh, uh, at the desk. When she when Big Swole walked in, this was dumb. The worst kind of cinematic match you could possibly have. There was it was nice when they went outside and they started and were fighting. That was yeah. nice. Yeah. But as soon as that door opened and Brick went back in, it's like, oh, here comes the shit. <laughs> and the gas. I mean, not only did she go to sleep in about. 20 seconds. No, 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 no. 20 seconds is giving it too much time. It was literally like, doom, doom, gone. And, and there was a spot where I think it was uh, that other chick was holding the diploma. Big Swole threw it at her and she held it for like a second or two. It's like, why are you holding it? Hit her with it. But she held it. Big Swole punches through it. And I love the fact that the referee said, ring the bell. I'm like, there's a bell in there? <laughs> Where's the bell in a dentist office? This this match was re- just... Oh. Yeah, the execution was not good. It all looked choreographed, badly choreographed. And it, 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 look, it was just... I'm sorry, man. Imagine if... You know, we're all wrestling fans, long-time wrestling fans, and we love the business. Imagine if you're trying to bring someone in saying, hey, man, look, big time pay-per-view on tonight. I know you're not a wrestling fan, but... Look, just give this a try. And imagine, this is the first thing they see on the main company. Uh, I mean, if I'm there, I'm walking the fuck out. Oh, I got better things to do on my Saturday night than watch this. It, it was okay. absolutely fun. Okay, well, okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, I got to play devil's advocate. You know, it's only right. This match, or cinematic match, or... Viking Raiders, Street Profits. Once again, you're comparing dog shit and cat shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, okay. man. None of it you want in your mouth or on your. But face. if you just want my opinion, I, I will say I thought this was better than the Viking Raiders and Street Profits, but still, they were both F's for me. I wouldn't watch either of them again, <laughs> and the only reason. Both F's is because there's no grading system that goes lower than F. I told you, we need to come up with something. Yeah, I would have given the Viking Raiders and Street Profits lower than an F if there was something lower than an F, but there's not, so I can't. I give it a Vikings Profit grade. There you go. Oh, man. Well. (sighs) Yeah, it wasn't. Okay. And and the reason I gave it a C minus, I guess. Because literally, I was at F, but I was like, okay, the, the fighting they did on the outside was good. And I thought Big Swole was good, given the scenario. But everything else was trash. <sighs> What's wrong with just a regular match? I mean, wh- why did they think that was the I think they were. I think they're still... Um, 
I think they're still I think easing Britt Bri- Baker back in. I don't think she's 100% yet. Oh, okay. So. But they, I, I also think they couldn't they couldn't string this out any longer. So they had to figure out a way. And this was the easiest way. Let's just do cinematic. Hey. Okay. All right. So the next match, I have to disqualify myself because I was distracted. And I didn't come back until the end of it. Which I hate because when I did come back, I actually saw some good action and hard hitting stuff. I mean, real hard hitting. Man, young Bucks, they don't take it. It looks like and sounds like they don't take nothing off these super kicks. But I also feel like, how many damn times can you kick out? This was almost at like. The Fiend, Seth Rollins, stomp level of stomp, kick out, stomp, kick out, super kick, kick out, super kick, kick out. I mean, I, I, I mean, I give it to to Jungle Boy. I mean, I give what they're trying to do, trying to build him up, trying to, you know, make him look good in the loss. But let's be real: if somebody legitimately kicks you in the face, you ain't getting up. And for you to take it three times. And then it takes the elite, uh, was it the elite trigger knee to put you down finally? I mean, that says a lot, I guess, but I just don't like all the kickouts. Two kickouts, okay, fine. Once you get to three and four and it's the same move, you're, you're what you're doing is you're killing the finisher, which I don't like. So, but again, I'm just qualifying myself, not grading the match. I I do think the right team won. The Young Bucks should win. They need to get. The, they need to be the damn tag champions at at this point. But I guess we'll get there. So, um, co-host Rob, what did you think? Well, I thought that the match started off, and I, I guess you didn't see the beginning. I thought that it started off kind of slow. Look, anytime the Young Bucks are wrestling, I'm all I'm all about it. And I like Jurassic Express as well. We've talked about the talent of Luchasaurus. I also enjoy watching Jungle Boy go. I just thought the match started off a little slowly. However, it did pick up. And you talked about some of the spice that we saw. Um, the only reason I was buying some of the kickouts is because I thought it got to a point. I, I thought that, and I, I can't really remember when it happened, but... Jungle Boy looked like he took a hard bump. He took a really hard bump. And I almost wasn't sure he was going to be able to kick out, but he did. And then, you know, they kept going with the the super kick party. He kicked out again. I agree with you that it did get a little bit ridiculous how many times he was kicking out. But (laughs) I still wanted to. Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. But, man, look, man, after what we saw with the tooth and nail match, this was a, a, a refreshing bump up in quality of, of entertainment and match. So I gave this a B minus, which is probably the lowest grade I've ever given any match involving the Young Bucks. But that's, to me, that's the testament to how great they are. But the slow start really, really bothered me. So I, I couldn't go higher than a B minus. Well... I actually have to agree with uh, Mr. Rob. I also gave this a B minus, and for the exact same reason. This start, it for how great the Young Bucks are and what what uh, Jurassic Express can do, they can do so much. And this start was almost painfully slow. It was almost getting toward the brutal realm because you know these guys can do so much in that ring. Thankfully, by the end, this, it started to pick up and pick up and pick up because I was hovering in the middle of the road sea territory. But it did pick up. There was a few spots that were a little odd. Uh, there was that weird choke slam yeah. that Luchasaurus did, and I don't know if one of the, the Bucks was supposed to flip. It was kind of weird when they did it. But... The Bucks are just an amazing tag team. The fact that they have still not been the AEW tag team champions to me is a crime because they are the best tag team going. Hopefully this leads them to try to get 
those belts because, damn it, they need to be champions. I want to see them down the road being champions. But this was a B minus. That 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 slow start just it just kind of killed it. Had it not been for that, this probably would have been a B plus, maybe even an A minus. As Rob said, it speaks to how talented the folks are in that ring that it became a B minus. There's a lot of other people. This would have just stayed middle of the road, maybe even been a D, but B minus. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I'm I'm very high on the young books myself, but I I think that the Lucha Bros edged them out, but like by like a hair, uh, as far as talent, because I believe Ray Phoenix is a big part of that because he is insane, but so is uh, Nick Jackson. Those two to me are the most two talented superstars in. AEW, as far as from a strictly a talent, basically when they had that one on one match on Dynamite, they they killed it, they killed it. So, continuing on, we get the twenty one man Casino Battle Royale. The winner receives a future AEW World Championship match, and I thought this was just like. On the table, on the clean, on the slate for Darby Allen to win, but let's get into it. So the first round is uh, one half of the best friends: Trent, Christopher Daniels, Jake Hager, The Blade, Rafe, and Ray Phoenix to start the match. Uh, after that, enters Frankie Kazarian, Will Hobbs. I never, I've never seen Will Hobbs, so I, I really need to start watching Dynamite again. Uh, but it's good to see some, some uh, a, a brother on this show because once I saw him, I realized it ain't no other brothers on this damn show. Outside the Scorpio Sky. Outside, yeah, outside of him. But I mean, I guess I'm just so used to seeing him. But it's like, damn, one lonely. <laughs> well, okay, don't forget about Sunny Kiss. Well, I don't really consider him a brother, but okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> very I'm not. I'm not saying anything. On that. <laughs> hey, it 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 could still be a little more blended, regardless. Um, then you get Santana and Ortiz. Uh, they came in at the same time, which I thought was kind of interesting, but. Uh, after that, you get Billy. Not that the Pentagon changed his name. He's Penta El Cerro now. You know, I kind of caught that too. Apparently, so like you, I don't watch Dynamite every week, and maybe I missed something. But uh, for whatever reason, yeah, it appears that's the case. Uh, I like Pent. I'm, I'm still gonna call him Pentagon. Whatever. Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, and Darby Allen. Of course, Darby Allen got the biggest pop of, the night, of this match. Um, and then Sean Spears, Eddie Kingston, The Butcher, Sonny Kiss, Lance Archer, enter the match. And Matt Seidel is the last man to enter. He's the Joker. I've never heard of Matt Seidel. I don't know if either of you two have. But I was like, I don't know who this motherfucker is. As far as the match goes, though, I thought this was interesting. I don't know. I was trying to find, like, what is the storytelling? I guess the biggest storytelling in the match was the, you know, the Brian Cage, Darby Allen dynamic when they, you know, attacked him and put him in the body bag with the thumbtacks and then threw his ass out of the ring. I was like, okay. He just came back from injury. Now I'm trying to kill him again. All right. Uh, Sean Spears comes out, and he and you know he tried to talk talk strategy, and he instead of going straight to the ring, he goes to the commentary table, and which was cool. But then you just went to the match anyway. You didn't even wait till the last person came out. So how smart are you? And you got eliminated pretty quickly. Uh, in any event, the match comes down to. Eddie Kingston and uh, Lance Archer. So it was Lance Archer and Eddie Kingston up on the... Okay, so 
this is where the match went to sh- absolute shit. Um, I know you two are fans, of, especially Mike. You're a fan of Jake the Snake. Tell this old ass motherfucker to go home. Okay? It's time. It's over. He's standing there doing God knows what with this bag that supposedly has a snake in it. And he's just standing there looking ridiculous. Trying to do whatever with like look at my look at my bag. I got a snake in the bag. And Eddie kids like what are you doing? I don't know if Eddie wasn't doing what he was supposed to do, if he was supposed to react a certain way and he just wasn't. If he was no selling. I don't know, but Jake looked so awkward in that position. I was like, what is going on? What is he supposed to be doing? Is something supposed to be coming out of the bag? What's going on? This is very obvious. This shit ain't going how it's supposed to. But in the end, uh, Lance Archer does get the win. Uh, throwing Eddie Kingston on the outside to the Butcher and Blade. And Lance Archer is now the number one contender for the AEW championship. Uh, I was enjoying this thing until the end. <sighs> C minus. Go ahead, Rob. All right, man. Look, um, I didn't enjoy this match. I, I really didn't. I know they're trying to, to do things different. But I thought it was a little bit of overthinking the way they they had suits to the cards and would bring a few wrestlers in at a time. To me, it seemed like a, a, a knockoff Royal Rumble. Why not just have just a traditional battle royal? You can call it Casino Battle Royale, but why not just do a traditional royal uh, battle royal? So I, I didn't really care for that. And then you talked about Matt Seidel. I wasn't familiar with him either, but man, as soon as dude got into the ring, man, he had this horrible botch where he was standing on the top rope. And I don't know if he was attempting to do some sort of moonsault or or front flip off the top rope, but he slipped and fell flat on his back. It looked, it looked ugly. It it just, it was just a terrible botch. So (laughs) yeah, that, that really kind of took me out of it. And then that whole thing with Darby Allen being put in the, in the body bag with the tax and then Brian Cage to throwing him out of the ring. That looked bad to me. You talked about how Darby Allen just came back from injury. And so there's no way when you're in a body bag and some dude is throwing you where you can control how you're going to land. And to me, that just, that just looked bad. And, and I don't know if Darby was selling, but he got up, he was moving kind of slow. They kind of had to help him out of the ring. Now look, maybe, like I said, maybe it was selling. Okay, fine. But I don't know, man. I just, I just, that took me from a place of, oh, wow, this is an interesting spot to, wow, is dude okay? It took me to that uncomfortable place where I'm concerned about the wrestler instead of just watching the match from an entertainment standpoint. So I didn't really like that. Uh, you talked about Jake the Snake Roberts. Look, we, we do love Jake the Snake Roberts, man. He, he's old school. But, man, we even were sitting here saying, look, if you've got a snake in the damn bag, take it out. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so don't don't just put this bag up and open the bag up, show Eddie Kingston what's in there, but you're not showing us what's in there. It it was it was awkward. Part of to me what made this match not entertaining. So I gave it a D. I just didn't like really anything about it. And then Lance Archer winning. Actually, I did not text out my results, and and I know it's easy for me to say this. Now that we're podcasting, but I that's who would have been my pick, and not because I think he's deserving, but because I think he's someone who can present an interesting challenge to Moxley, but not really be a threat to win. So he wins, I'm okay with that, but the match itself, garbage D. This was a fucking F. And it's because of Matt Seidel. I'm sorry. Wait, wait. It's not because of Jake? Oh, Jake didn't help matters much. But I already gave it an F. I can't go any lower at that point. Yeah. When you climb up there and you flip over ass shit onto the ground. (laughs) How? You've 
ruined the whole match. I'm just looking at your next fuck up. And every time he was on the screen, that's what I got focused on. I'm looking to see what what's the next move you're going to fuck up. And Darby, that was my pick to win this. Before Darby went into the bag, he got thrown into the pole on the outside, which... Oh, yeah, head first. Out, he smacked it with his head right on. There was no cell in there. He smacked the, the damn thing. So it's like, Darby, come on, man. You just got back and you're about to get killed again. And then the body bag and the thumbtacks. It's like, guys, that's the man that's probably next year going to have an, the AEW title, I think. Next year, at some point, that is going to be the person that's going to have the belt. Why screw it up and kill him? I mean, do you remember how the Daniel Bryan story ended? You kept killing him. He kept being away. Now you're going to do this to Darby. So, but this 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 battle royale, after Matt tripped and fell and ate shit, I mean, and Jake the Snake, you, you both have said it. I love Jake. I have a Jake the Snake DVD over there. You and me, Rob, we, we went to the Jake the Snake show in town. Love Jake the Snake, an absolute genius. But that was uncomfortable seeing him just stand there like a statue holding this bag. It's, it's like, are you going to do something? Please throw the bag. And then at one point, he started beating him with the bag. It's like, what, Jake, go home. Go home. Are you drinking again? What the hell, man? What was going on? This was weird, uncomfortable, a fucking F. And this pay-per-view at this point, Rob and I needed more beer. <laughs> we needed more beer. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was thinking it was, you know, okay, it's the first half of the show. Maybe it's going to pick up, you know, still having high hopes. Oh. And then, you know, Mr. Rob just talked about and or, or or Mike, you know, we talk about you know injuries Ugh. and spots, and we get Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. Now I don't know if this was their plan or if they were acting on the fly, because it started out really good. And when I say started out, I'm talking about the first two minutes. I like that they went to the stadium part, the actual Jacksonville Jaguar Stadium, and you see Matt Hardy, and he's walking, and then you see Seven Guevara pull up on the, the golf cart slowly behind him, and it's like, okay, here we go with the standoff, and he crashes. They do the DDT spot on the table. They do the spot. Um, so, And then we get to the, the lift. In this table spot. Now, clearly, they were both supposed to go to a table. Now, this is a, this is this is a, a situation where I would say WWE has get, gets right more often than not. It seems like with with WWE, the higher the person goes, the more tables they will include. If they're going really high, well, let's put two tables up just in case, because. This spot scared the hell out of me when Matt Hardy missed the fucking table pretty much and hit head first on that concrete floor. I thought he like it that's over with. This called this thing. And it looked like they were about to and then I mean it got to the point where they they, they called it and they went back to the announcer table and then the match was back on again. And then all they did was climb the scaffolding, and then Matt Hardy knocked Sammy Guevara off of it through the stage area. And he was counted out. This is my F. Because, first of all, it should have stopped after the injury and then been done with, and they could have... Uh, you know, put it on as this is, a, this is a serious accident. It did not mean the mean for that to happen. Okay, fine. But for you to then restart the match and then it's just knocking him off of the scaffolding. That's it. That's all we get. 
And it was it just the whole thing just looked so unprofessional, so sloppy. <sighs> F. I, I, from this is this is from from a production standpoint, it's an F. You didn't to me they didn't handle the thing right, and I just saw on a Bleach report that Matt Hardy still had to go to the emergency room. F. Uh, book. Uh, Rob in the previous Mr. Rob in the previous uh, match used the words uncomfortable. I can't give this an F. I want to. I have to just do. You know what? This will be the first person to do this grade. I'm going to just do this. I have to just say zero. Because at that point, the match meant nothing. Because I'm sitting here wondering, did we just witness, is he alive? Did he crack his skull? What, what just happened? So I couldn't care about the match. I thought it was over. And it should have been. Because you're just risking potential more damage. I get Matt's a competitor. And in the wrestling business, the show must go on. Uh, for those of us who remember watching the night when Owen Hart passed, you can argue about how that show should have ended, but it's an old mentality in wrestling. The show must go on. But it was so uncomfortable. At that moment, you don't care. Well, you care about Matt's health, but you're not invested in a match anymore. And then climbing up that, that tower thing, all I'm thinking is, oh my God, don't do not do this. And this match, by the end, it was rushed. They rushed that ending. Maybe the only prop I can give. But it, it should have been over right there. The sin that they did in this is that table was too close. It was too close. It needed to be further out. And it was almost right up against that thing. And... You're going to fall. You're going to go right over it. That's a rookie mistake. That's what I would see in backyard wrestling. Trust me, I know. This, it's a zero because I couldn't care about the match at this because I was concerned for Matt's health. I was concerned for his life almost at this point. So, uncomfortable. Just an uncomfortable match. One of the most uncomfortable. Yeah, I am so conflicted on this one. Because I spoke earlier, and, and, and I'm going to piggyback off of Mike here about how I was so uncomfortable. That spot, first of all, I was kind of surprised because when I saw them doing the match in, in the football stadium, I thought maybe it was pre recorded. So I was thinking, okay, another cinematic match. Well, when I saw that spot where Matt, basically for Matt, it's like a trust fall because he's falling on his back, Guevara is on top of him. And so obviously, you know, Matt, he's hoping he knows exactly the spot to land, but you're, you're, you're falling on your back. I'm not sure that spot should have even been done because Matt basically just fell 15, 20 feet with Guevara on top of him. The straight concrete. And it was horrible to watch. It was uncomfortable. And... To Aubrey Edwards' credit, it took her a little while, but she finally did the X. And whenever we see that, wrestling fans know that means they're calling the master saying, this is it. He can't go on. He can't continue. And I applauded that. But then for whatever reason, the match was allowed to continue. For whatever reason, I guess they let Matt convince them or talk them into the fact that, hey, man, I can go. Like Mike was talking about, the show must go on. I understand that that's an old adage in wrestling. I get it, but look, a man's health is at stake here, and I'm no longer just entertained watching a wrestling match. I'm concerned, literally concerned about a man's health. They make it to the arena, and and as Matt is climbing up the platform, because obviously you can tell this is how the match was supposed to end in the first place. I don't think the match, it, it was supposed to go that quickly. I actually think maybe they were supposed to go into the ring and fight a little more, but because of what happened to Matt previously, they're trying to get to the finish of the match. Matt even stumbled a little bit climbing up a platform, which made me even more nervous. Like, is he going to fall off of this platform? 
He gets Guevara in position, knocks him down. Aubrey Edwards counts 10, match over. By this point, I'm just so out of the match. And I'm so upset by the fact that, you know, sometimes you have to save a wrestler from themselves. And, and that never should have been allowed to continue. I don't know who is in charge of that situation. But once Aubrey Edwards did the X and and, 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 and said the match was over, that Matt couldn't continue, that should have been the end of it. I want to give it an F, and I probably should for all of the reasons you said, Mr. Eric, but I'm going to give it a D only because out of respect for Matt Hardy, man, he should have just quit. But out of his love and respect for the business, he probably insisted let me finish. So I don't want to give it an F, even though even though you're absolutely justified to do it for the reasons you did. But just for Matt Hardy's sake, because of the guts he showed and his respect for the business, even against his own better judgment, I'm going to go D. But it was so uncomfortable to watch and, and it just very difficult. And I just hope that Matt's going to be okay. And I'm telling you, Matt, guys named Matt tonight did not have a good night. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man. man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even connect those dots. <laughs> um, well, yeah, man, that, that's a tough one because I guess you like, 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 I, I like the points you guys made and, that, and that's why I kind of didn't say too much but man I was really looking forward to this match like it was one of the matches I was like like I thought could steal the show because Sammy Guevara can go with the style of match it was going to be I said oh well they could really they could really do some things and the fact that they gave them the stadium I was like oh they really could do some things and then you see like you said, it had to have been cut short. They probably had at least another twenty minutes. No, no, I won't say twenty minutes. Maybe another ten minutes of stuff they had planned that they just that they just could not do. And I agree one thousand percent. You have to save the wrestler from themselves. You can't just. How are you going to leave it up to? The the person that is potentially concussed, yeah. Let's leave it up to them to make a decision. He doesn't know where he is. That's uh, like asking a crackhead: "You want to stay in rehab, or you want to go home?" Well, shit, I'm gonna get out today. Like that that that's not how this works. <sighs> well, when his head hit, he stiffened up. How many times have we seen those kind of knockouts in like boxing or in MMA when they lock up? He was. Out. Yeah. The lights weren't on. He didn't know what planet he was on. He was gone. That or some tremendous acting. It was horrible to watch. And then as he's climbing that platform, what if, he, like I said, he stumbled? What if he falls off of that platform? It could have gone so badly. Thank God it didn't. He was stumbling when he was walking around right after it happened. He tried to walk around and he couldn't. And he did a. It almost reminded me of Taker Brock Lesnar when he got concussed. It was taking me back to that level of uncomfortableness. Yeah. But he looked yeah. worse. He did. He really well, did. We kn- well, we knew this had happened. Yeah. We didn't know what had happened with I really, Taker. Yeah, I didn't really uh, know that Taker was concussed. But with Matt, I definitely knew something was wrong. He could not stand up. He could not walk. He was grabbing at, at Gravar's trunks, almost pulled his trunks off inadvertently, I'm sure. He, he just didn't know where he was at that point. So why on earth would you ever let him continue? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if you're if you're Tony Khan, you gotta start making better decisions, and and start looking out for your talent. And it, it, you gotta treat your talent almost as if they're your children. Like I, I get it. You want to go. It's no different than if you got a kid in a sport, and and you know they really want to play. But but you're hurt. I can't. I mean, it's my discretion at the end of the day just to let you go out on the field and play. Can you physically do it? Probably. 
Is there potential for you to get hurt again? Yeah. So, I don't know. To me, tonight, the risk was not worth the reward. It just wasn't. And after that, we we get, to, to me, the best match on the whole card. And I can't even believe I'm saying that about a AEW women's match, but... I also can't really say it was an AEW, a true AEW women's match because they went outside of AEW and brought in um, an NWA talent. And I I really can't wait to hear what Book has to say, Rob too, but the fact that you had to bring in someone else doesn't even work for you to have a good championship match says it all. <laughs> but it's going to focus on the match itself. Hikaru Shida versus Thunder Rose for the AEW Women's uh, World Championship. I thought this was, again, that's like I said, the best bell to bell match on the card. They had the most cohesion, there was no botches, it made the most sense. These women, while it was slow paced, I will say that that that's the only real drawback to me. It was a little slow paced, but it was methodical. It was there was quality moves in the match. They didn't miss a beat. The ending was a tad subtle. I mean, not subtle. A tad uh uh out of nowhere. But again, I still think these these women did great work. I love. Thunder Rose's facials when she does her moves. Um the submission moves, the submission holes that these two were doing. This was like a like a coming out party for Karushita. I mean, and, and Thunder Rosa, if they can find a way to sign her, they need to sign her ASAP. Throw the throw the freaking safe at her ass and pay her whatever it takes to get her off of NWA. And bring her here. Cause she's great. She's awesome. She would immediately be second best talent on the card, if not the best. She was awesome in this match. But uh, Hikaru Shida does retain her title with uh, that running knee, and she does win the match. I, I For this being the best match on this card, I had to give I can't believe I'm even doing this. I gave it an A. I mean, to, just for the fact that, to me, it was the best match. Bell to bell, and the women did some fantastic work. They outdid the men tonight. Rob? Well, I do believe that they outdid most of the men. It, it wasn't my favorite match of the night. Um, it was a good match. I can't say it was great. I was impressed by Thunder Rosa, who I had never heard up until the lead up to this match. And like you said, the ladies did do great work. I can tell that both of these ladies had respect for the spot that they were in and they were doing their best to put on the good show. But sometimes your your level of talent can only can only take you so far. So it's not that they were doing bad work, they were doing the best work that they could, but their talent level only let them do so much. But I was entertained. I just didn't think it was spectacular. So I went C, but that's not being disrespectful at all. I think that Thunder Rosa, I agree with you. If AEW could bring her in, I think that would be great. I don't know if Billy Corgan, the head of NWA, is willing to let her go. Um, But I think it would be great for AEW if they could bring her in. Because I do see potential in her. I like Hikaru Shida, but I, I don't think even one of them... Either one of them are great talents, but there's potential there. This match showed that there was potential, but I I didn't think the match was great. So I can't give it a great grade. I could only go C. Okay. All right. The women's division of AEW and I, great friends. I have been so complimentary of their matches. And this match, I can't give it an A. For me, it's definitely not the best match of the night. I will give it a B minus out of the fact that I could see the effort. They were in somewhat of an odd situation after because of what had just happened prior. An odd situation because 
a quarter of the match, I'm sitting there thinking, is Matt okay? Is Matt okay? I, I, need, I, I need to know if Matt's okay. And it kind of hurt their match. They did a good job in that ring. They put together a very good match. And you said it, Mr. Eric. It speaks of how much a fucking wasteland the AEW women's division is that you have to go to another promotion, even one that's been dead for about 30 years, to bring somebody in to try to bring life to yours. I would love to see Thunder Rosa stick around, but if I don't know what other women talent is in is in a in a, uh, NWA, but unless they're just somebody superstar level there, they're not going to risk losing her unless AEW can steal her away because of money. This was an entertaining match. They put together a very good effort out there. I was entertained. It's just that they were in an odd situation. And I could see the effort. But I can't call that great. Uh, it's a B minus. I actually think Penelope Ford's match from the previous pay per view that was far better than this one, and I can't believe I'm saying that about a Penelope Ford match. But they put together a good effort. They worked hard. Uncomfortable situation for them. I see the effort. I applaud the effort. But B minus. Okay. I mean, coming from you, that's like an A plus. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and not you know what? This is kind of one of those deals where they haven't been doing well at the women division in AEW, and we've talked about that. Like for all the things that they do right, they do not. They just don't book, and I think a lot of it has to do with just they don't give the women the time of day, and. WWE does to the to the the effect that I think in WWE I almost care more about the women than I do the men. Not that that's a bad thing. I just think that that just goes to show you that it is possible to make the women as or if not more interesting than the men. I at this point I don't care male or female just give me interesting storylines and good matches I don't care who it is agreed yep good point and then we get this uh, okay I gotta disqualify myself yet again (laughs) cause that was not it might it might seem like you know convenient (laughs) that I didn't get to see some of these matches but no I paid to watch this show. I want to see everything. Um, so we get Matt Cardona, Scorpio Sky, Dustin Rhodes, and QT Marshall with Allie and Brandy Rhodes versus the Dark Order, Brody Lee, Mr. Brody Lee, Colt Cabana, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson. Um, the Natural Nightmares end up getting the W. I actually thought the Dark Order should have won this match. Especially with Brody Lee just winning the TNT Championship. I don't know. I, I don't like that they... From a storyline standpoint, I don't like that they beat the Dark Order yet again. If you're going to try to push them, you you just put the TNT Championship on Brody Lee. Why are they losing? They shouldn't lose until Cody comes back. So so to me, the, like you, you can't solve the problem before you bring in the cure. I don't know. I don't. I don't like that that booking. I don't. I'm, and it's confusing to me. And that's all I can say because I didn't see the match. So I'm gonna throw it to my co-host, Rob. What'd you think? I didn't think much of the match. You made some good points. The only thing I'll say is that Brody Lee isn't losing. The Dark Order is losing, and specifically Colt Cabana is losing. Who I think I think that's appropriate. I don't really think he even fits with the Dark Order. Uh, Cody took a horrible beatdown against Brody Lee. So, tonight, Dustin and Scorpio Sky, Matt Cardona, they, they got a little get back tonight. So, that's okay. But you can't have, I agree, you can't have the Dark Order continue to lose. And definitely, look, you have to have Brody Lee look like a strong TNT champion. I just didn't think, once again, I didn't think there was anything special about this match. I can't think of any one spot that was like, oh, wow, yeah, that, that was a great spot. 
it, it was just an average match. So an average match from me is going to get an average grade, and that's going to be a C. That's all it was, nothing special. So not a special grade. C. <sighs> woo, woo, woo. <laughs> you know it. It was nice seeing him, and he did a good job, and I'm so glad to see him away from that 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 gimmick that was just a just eyesore every time he was on the screen. Wasn't that, Mr. Rob, uh, one of your honorable mentions as the worst of the entrance themes, his uh, WWE radio? It was. Yeah, radio. I can't remember which. He's had a couple of different Radio. Ones. That was the name of it, radio. That's, yeah, exactly, yes. Yes, and deservedly so, but yes, that was one of my uh, either Terrible. dishonorable mentions. Terrible. Yeah, gimmicks. I don't know Terrible. if you call them honorable mentions when they're the worst of, but... Yeah. yeah. Terrible gimmick, and I'm glad to see him away from that. Uh, I gave this a C. This was middle of the road. Um, Dustin Rhodes it impresses me. And for, some, for, some, for such a senior in the business, he can still go, and... You can go, and it's not painful to watch him or uncomfortable because you know he's been in the business so long, and you're like, he's not one of those guys that's older, and you're like, oh, man, why don't you just stop, give it up, you know, just stop going in there, man. He can still go. He did a, an awesome destroyer in the match. So Dustin can still go. It's great to see him. Uh, the Dark Order, <laughs> Mr. Eric, you might appreciate this. When I look at the Dark Order, what it makes me think of is WCW's Dungeon of Doom. Ah, uh, just... Mm. There's, there's supposed to be this evil, dark thing, and all I do is laugh. What is Colt Cabana doing in this? Does anything about him re- even spell dark? It looked like he had musical notes and an ice cream cone on his jacket. And when the match was over, he was getting hugged. Is that Dark Order? I don't know what they're doing with the Dark Order, but you you said it, Mr. Eric. They're, the booking with them is just quite odd. And it harkens back to when one of the times we first saw the Dark Order. They attacked, they came out, and the crowd chanted, Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Guess what? I'm still wondering who you are. Because you're not a dark order. The ministry, that's dark. The brood, that's dark. This Mm -hmm. is a comedy, which is why I push it to the Dungeon of Doom. The only thing that they got right was the giant. But this, it was middle of the road. A C. You know, I always thought that they would make Evil Uno, like... They missed the boat on that because they could have had him talk in a certain cadence and with like a certain type of Bane type voice. And he just speaks normal and proper. He talks like Keith Lee. And it's like, what's so evil about him? He speaks just fine. I don't get it. And Stu Grayson, he he does too. He's, you know, he's got the the British accent. You know, it's they need to do better with that. The Dark Order thing. And, and immediately when they were called the Dark Order, I was like, so is this a fake-ass ministry of darkness? Because they did it better. And you mentioned the brood. They did it better. And there was only three of them. Man. I don't know. Huh. And then we get FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood. Tully Blanchard versus Kenny Omega at Adam Page, and you know, if 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 there wasn't two more matches after this, I would say they're probably still wrestling because this match was long as damn shit. Twenty nine minutes and forty seconds. This match went. It was good. It was better than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't the I thought it was going to be like a bunch of. I thought the whole storyline between Omega and Paige being able to coexist was, would take over the match, but it did. To me, they still were, put, were able to put on a a good match. Way too damn long. Okay, I, I lose interest after a while. Just, just give me a little something. Yeah, 
I don't really know what else to say about the match. It was good work, though, by all four men. I will say that much. Normally, I have better notes, but it was just a busy, busy night. And I was just watching, and I'm going off the cuff. I I, I do... I like both teams. Well, I should I never take that back. I like FTR. Because they're a legitimate tag team. I thought that coming in, they should have been... First of all, I should have had a better career in WWE. And I hope they have that in AEW. But the right team won. FTR pinning Adam Page. And I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this a strong B. I thought it was good. Not great. It's too damn long. But I, I can't really give these four a bad grade because they do do great work. They work hard. Kenny Omega, I'm still waiting for that wow match. But he hasn't exactly... While I'm waiting on the wow match, he still hasn't put on a bad match either. I, I like Adam Page. So I'm, I'm going to go B. I'm going to go B. Right team one. Book. For me, this was the best match of the night. You said it was too long. Rob and I made a point talking about this. It was long, but we didn't notice it was long because we weren't paying attention to the clock. Unlike Edge and Randy Orton, where all we could do was look at the clock. I didn't look at the clock until it was getting toward the end. I'm like, oh, wow, this match has been about 20 minutes. I, I didn't realize it. I was entertained. Great movements, great moves in that in the match. FTR is a classic tag team. Some of the moves that they were pulling, like the abdominal stretch and your partner's pulling you to get that extra pull, I haven't seen that in a long time. So it was bringing me back. Adam Page and Kenny Omega, I think we all knew that the time was coming, that they were going to lose, and this was the night for it. And then it was just you're wondering, okay, is this when the split happens? And... Something happened, and I guess we'll see where that goes. But this was best match of the night. I think the right team won as well. B plus, easily the best match of the night. And quite possibly the only match I would honestly sit back and watch again completely and not have a problem with is this one. So I'd probably give this an A if the rest of the matches weren't such shit. <laughs> You want to watch the women's match again? No. I could miss it. I would go to I would deliberately go to watch this match. If somebody plays that won't the women's match in front of me, I'd watch it, but would I search for it? No. That that's what I mean. Like you wouldn't turn away from it, like, oh this bullshit. I wouldn't turn away from it, but I wouldn't search for it. Okay. I would actually search to watch this match. If this was on YouTube right now, I'd go and watch this match again. Okay. I'm in agreement that this was the best match of the night. I also gave it a B plus. And like you said, Mr. Eric, this is the match that I expected would be at least one of the best. I won't say the best, but I expected it to be one of the best. All four of these guys can go. And even though I'm not in the camp of Kenny Omega as the best wrestler in the world, he is, I will say he's one of the best. I mean, he dude's a good wrestler. For me, what was most interesting about this, because I did feel like it was time for FTR to win. I like FTR, and I'm glad they're in a, be- uh, a federation that won't have, you know, have them doing things like getting itching powder in, in their trunks and their drawers and, and, you know, silly, stupid storylines like that, because these guys can wrestle. So let them wrestle. That's what they did tonight. They won. And I also like that okay we took another step in this long story of Kenny Omega and Adam Hangman Page what's going to happen here and what I liked about it is that to me I'm not sure which one of these guys is going to end up being the heel when this feud finally finally comes you know oh it's going to be Kenny okay well see that's what I think the build up made it look like it might be Hangman but Based on what we saw tonight, it looks like Kenny might be the heel. And I think 
look, I think that could be good for Kenny. I always think that when you're a heel and, and you can go a little more vicious, it, I, I, maybe I just, because I lean towards heels, I just think your in-ring, what you can do in-ring can just make you appear to be better. So I'm looking forward to seeing heel Kenny Omega. I'm looking forward to seeing his match against face Adam Page. I, I think those will be entertaining. But tonight, solid match. The best match of the night. But it had everything that, that you would want. The right result and the forwarding of the storyline between, between Page and Omega. So I got to give it props. And I got to give it the highest grade that I'm giving tonight, which is a B plus. Okay. No, I get it. Uh, I just, I just, I guess I just had that appreciation for the women. And I thought, you know, they did a, a great job. You know, Thunder Rosa really impressed me. Her fa- I get really into somebody with their facials. So I think that's really uh, why I enjoyed that match more. So that when, 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 when you believe your own stuff, to me, that that's when you're doing your best work. And as far as this goes, yeah, I, I thought that this, this was, this was still, this was, if I had to do like a 1A and 1B, this would be 1B. Can't argue with that. You realize, Mr. Rob, that you and I pretty much nearly agreed on every match. And I, I do recall you saying when me and Mr. Eric did this, that a comet was hurtling toward Earth. So is another comet kind of hurtling no, toward No, 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 no. <laughs> That that happened. He said that because you and I literally hardly ever agree on anything. <laughs> right. Exactly. Rob and I have our moments too. <laughs> not not like you and me. It's, it's <laughs> not even close. Well, that's just because of one guy. And and no no we we've just agreed more. I have I have gone back in the archives. I'm going wow we really didn't no we damn we didn't agree on that either. Damn, we really didn't agree on that one. Yeah, it's a lot we don't agree on. <laughs> it's all on. It's all recorded, sir. <laughs> I'm kind of curious about this next one. What we all think about this? Very yeah, good. yeah, yeah. Uh, Orange Cassidy and Chris Jericho and the Mimosa Mayhem match. Now, I actually watched this match with my wife. <laughs> Oh, you should get her on Twitter graded. I really yeah, want to we hear need to, that. Yeah, get her on Twitter on. Oh, my God. She was like, first of all, <laughs> she had this thing with people and their ages. And she was like, how old is that guy? Talking about Jericho. I'm like, he's 49. She's like, that's it? <laughs> I almost sent out that gift. I almost sent out that oh, gift. Oh, God, I would have fell out. Oh. Dude, I don't, it's true. But. That that grimace gift kills me every time you see. <laughs> but then you know she was, she, you know what? For somebody that doesn't even watch wrestling, the way she was critiquing the match, it was almost like she does, because the spot, all the spots where they were like, you know, well, the, well, the, well the, really the one that stood out was when Cassidy got thrown over the top rope and he like. Threw his freaking leg into the, <laughs> the little pool of orange juice. It was like, yeah, we you threw your leg in there. We saw that. <laughs> like that was obvious. And but outside of that, I thought I thought this this was entertaining. This was fun. I was just like, let's just have fun with this. You know, I was just and then the fact that she was watching too. I was just I'm I'm just gonna enjoy this. I'm not gonna take this too serious. When I mean, you wrestle him and you're in that 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 match with Jericho, he he he's you're in the ring with him. You're sharing the ring with him. You you. But I do like the fact that Cassidy won. It wasn't a traditional Orange Cassidy match. He didn't do any of the sloth style stuff at all. He came out just blazing, and he hit the you no know, Jericho hit the damn cold breaker right away to start that match. And I'm like, oh shit, and. It was funny because Rob texted me during the match and he was like, so how did they win this match? <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you, you got champagne and orange juice on in two corners of the match. You got champagne glasses and stuff. So I'm like, what, 
what the hell's going on here? Well, it's Chris Jericho. You gotta have a bit of the bubbly. Yes. Les, les champions with a little bit of the bubbly and, you know, Orange Cassidy. So, they did lay out the rules. They said either pinfall submission or if you get thrown into one of the, you know, the tanks of I must Mimosa. Have been on a <laughs> in the end, it, it ends with, you know, Jericho on the top row and getting knocked. He gets knocked into one of the, the tanks of uh, orange juice and champagne, the bubbly. And Orange Cassidy wins. It was fun. It's not a match that I'm going to, like, seek out, like Mike said. But for what it was worth and the fact that, you know, my wife sat through it and got a couple laughs out of it, I give it a C plus. Come on with it, Rob. All right, man, you know, I'm going to quote Mike. This is a fucking F. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Look, when, when I see a ring set up and I see pools of champagne and orange juice in each corner, and first of all, when I heard it was called a Mimosa Mayhem match, I, I was scared because I'm like, okay, so is this going to be a thing where one of them, in order to win or lose, they have to drop the other in a vat of champagne and orange juice? Well, guess what? That's exactly what it was. And I guess... For me, it was hard to get in a humorous mood because I thought up to this point we had seen a garbage card. We had seen a dude concussed. It was just hard for me to get in 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 a laughing kind of funny mood. Maybe if some of the matches previously had got me to that place, I'd have a different perspective. But, but since I, I was disappointed in the card, I was worried about a couple of these wrestlers who, had, who took some bad bumps. I just couldn't get to a, a funny, humorous moment. All I could do is look at this match and say, this is going to be some stupid-ass shit. <laughs> and much. You know, I like it that Jericho, at this point in his career, is willing to put over Orange Cassidy. But if you're Orange Cassidy, do you really feel like this is your breakout match? I was disappointed that we didn't see any of the sloth style. I kind of get it, because maybe Orange Cassidy is just trying to show people, hey, I can actually go. I get it. But we like the sloth style. If you're a fan of Orange Cassidy, you kind of like that. So you could have incorporated it at least a little bit. But when, when, okay, yeah, sure. Okay, you beat Chris Jericho. You beat him by knocking him into a tub of champagne and orange juice. I, I just don't know if that's the most impressive thing to have on your wrestling resume. But I guess a victory over Chris Jericho, who is a legend, no matter what you think of him now, he is a legend in this business. I have utmost respect for him. It, it, it's, it's a feather in your cap. Okay, so fine. But was this a good match? No. Was I entertained by it? No. I, 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 I can't, I'm sorry. F, I, I just, I can't think of anything good to say about it. So that, that's my grade. That, that's it. <laughs> okay look I, I earlier in this pay-per-view within about a minute I graded it an F and that was that dumb Dennis match mentally I graded this match when I saw the title of it Mimosa Mayhem match as soon as I saw that that already told me this is going to be the fucking shit show of the entire pay-per-view. And, oh, my God, had it not been for a few accidents, this totally would have been the shit show of the whole pay-per-view. This was a fucking app, and I. this is one of those matches I wish I could go lower. It was pointless. It was garbage. It hurt my eyes. And I love Orange Cassidy. But you have this fiery feud between them. And now I'm supposed to laugh? I'm supposed to laugh at a tub of piss and some bubbly? No, no. This was a joke. This was a mockery. This was so, so dumb that I was waiting for the Viking prophets to show up. Because that's where they belong in this kind of environment. This was shit. Horrible. 
And it's just never good seeing Chris Jericho out there because he's such a fat slob. And I hate saying that because I respect he's a legend. He's a talent. He's a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best. But, oh, my God, it's just such a sore looking at him. He clearly doesn't care. And if you don't care, I'm not going to care. This was an F. I want to give it such a lower F because I did not care. It was a mockery. It was a joke. As Rob said, it was absolute shit. I never want to see this match again. The only way I would ever see this match again is if somehow Third Generation Wrestling has a a, a third thousand, a three thousandth episode. We're going to do a retrospective of All Out. Oh. 2020. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I never want to see this match again. Fucking F. I want to give it lower. Both of them can go to hell. Alright, I don't think it was that bad. I mean, you, you gotta get... And I get it. This was a tough show to really... You know, jump around as far as mood. But I, But to me, I think it's just a combination of fact that who I watched it with and then seeing Jericho, he's smiling, the crowd's singing his interest theme, and anytime Orange Cassidy's around, it's just like, you gotta just go, okay, let's just cool out, everybody be cool, you know, I'm wearing a, you know, I was at, I was looking for an AEW shirt today, and, and I was torn between the one I actually got, I got the, the Moxley shirt with the AEW with the orange spray paint Mox, it was either nice. this shirt or the Orange Cassidy shirt that they had. And it's the one he was wearing with his face on it. But something about me wearing another grown man's face on my shirt just didn't seem right. So I got the Moxley one. <laughs> oh, damn. I just bought a Prince shirt with his face all over it. So <laughs> Well, that's different. You're talking about a legend. Hey, man. I represented every day. No, but it's the image. Prince that yeah. I'm thinking. Oh, that's that, that's completely different. Like nobody knows who Orange Cat. The average person doesn't know who Orange Cassidy is. I got you. You'd be hard pressed to find a human being on Earth that doesn't know who Prince is or who Michael Jackson is. You know, stuff like that. It's like okay, nobody's gonna say anything to you. But I'm just walking around with this random dude. That most people don't know who he is. Like, why you? Why you got that dude's face on your shirt? You know? I got. You. So, in any event, it is what it is. I mean, I kind of felt like these guys probably hate this, but it's just hilarious to me. John Moxley versus MJF for the AEW World Champ. So the paradigm shift was That's banned true. from the match, and but I, I thought this was still. I mean, we said AEW has a problem finishing their shows. While I thought that this wasn't the best, this was not the best match on the card, but I also felt like it wasn't, it was one of Moxley's better matches. Because MJF is a good opponent, I feel like, and I feel like they, I wasn't really bored with the match. I thought it was good. MJF with the nice blade job. He got some, some serious blood going. I liked how they set the dynamic with, with, with him and Wardlow at the end, and Wardlow kind of goofed. Moxie was able to sneak in that paradigm shift DDT and get the pin in the win. And I thought, the, again, the right man won. As much as I think MJF has progressed, I didn't think it was the right time to put the title on him. You talking about somebody that's 24? Hmm. Only been wrestling five years? It's probably too soon. Moxley's a made man. He has that star appeal as far as WWE goes. I mean, WWE. AEW goes. <laughs> And I just don't think that MJF is quite there yet. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see how it goes with him and Lance Archer. I think that could be a good match, but we'll see. Uh, as far as this goes, though, again, this this to me decent to okay way in the show. Uh, I'll give it a B minus. I'll give it a B minus. I thought they could have done better. Were all the stipulations that they give that they gave out tonight? I thought this match could have used one as well. Besides, well, I can't do the paradigm shift. Fine. 
They could have added a last minute stipulation like, okay, let's make it a street fight, but you still can't do the paradigm shift. Because we, what we were supposed to get with the Matt Hardy thing, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Okay. I love MJF. He's a classic heel. He's good at pissing people off. But my problem with him is he gets hokey. And part of that is the reason I had to give this match a D. Oof. We've all seen the, the, the battle of two tired people on their knees fighting. We saw that a lot tonight, by the way. Sam C. Damn near every match had that. So I was getting sick of it already at this point. But fine. Do that for about five or ten seconds. Whatever. It got uncomfortably long. Way too long with him doing that. It, it, it started to be a joke. And I, I don't know what MJF's fetish is with biting people, but he he just kept biting. And I already every time I see MJF, I love, love him as a heel, but I constantly think of him as the guy that put Cody Rose's toe in his mouth. So it's like, would you stop? Biting people now, it's getting, it's just gross. And this match was below average, nothing fantastic, kind of goofy. And I went back and listened to a few things before this with Moxley. His matches have all been kind of like this. I haven't really been giving them stellar grades. I think the best match I put him in was that no holds barred or lights out match, whatever he had with Kenny Omega. I think that's the best match I've given him. And I don't know if that's because of who he's wrestling or the type of matches they put together, but his matches just don't impress me. They're, they're barely middle of the road. This one didn't even make middle of the road. I'm getting to a point now where I want the belt off Moxley. And I can't believe I'm saying that because I love John Moxley. It's not MJF's time, fine, but I was bored. This match was silly. It was pointless almost. It just didn't. It just didn't keep my interest. So I, I have to give it a D, man. I'm. I have to be like Rob said. I got to be real. Okay. Well, I wouldn't say I was bored, but at the same time, I wasn't overwhelmed. When I heard about this match, I wasn't really excited. I didn't think these two would work well together. I didn't think their styles would mesh. And I didn't feel like they did. I think that MJF is a better heel when he's on the mic and when he's in the ring and he's talking. But then when he gets in the ring and he's actually wrestling, I'm not overly impressed. I'm, I'm not saying he can't get there and be a good wrestler. I, I just don't think he, he's there yet. I, I'm not really impressed with his... Uh... Now, Mr. Eric, you mentioned the fact that you know he, he's a good bleeder. I was just dumbfounded by what caused him to bleed. <laughs> and, then, and then the weird thing is that he, he was bleeding so well, but then, man, it just dried up. I mean, dude was just bone dry. But then somehow, some way, he started bleeding like a faucet again. And once again, I didn't know how it happened or why it happened. So I'm not just impressed because you bleed. I mean, give me a, show, show me how it happened or show me why. I, I was just, I was kind of perplexed by that. I think Moxley is, is I, I think he's better in the hardcore matches, which really aren't my thing. But I think I've rated his his matches higher that are more in the hardcore style because I believe that fits what he does. Tonight wasn't that type of match. And like I said, MJF to me is not as great a wrestler as he is a character. So it just made for a match that I just didn't think was that great. I'm happy with the result, though, because I did not think it was MJF's time. I just don't think he's ready right now to be champ. So I gave it a C minus. I think I didn't hate the match, but at the same time, I just wasn't impressed either. So that's it. C minus. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get it. This This whole show wasn't, it didn't feel like all out. I didn't feel like people went all out that's a good point because i felt like i almost felt like this was maybe just an extended uh episode of dynamite and i don't know what was going on tonight i know that they had people in the audience but 
it just didn't sound like the crowd response outside of the the instance where Jericho was coming to the ring and, and the crowd sang the lyrics to um, Judas effect like they or Judas. Judas, yeah. Judas effect, move. But yeah, outside of that, the crowd response, I, I, I just didn't feel like I could hear it tonight. I just didn't feel like it was there. I don't know if it was something with the audio. But that, along with the underwhelming wrestling and then the, the horrible bumps we saw involving Matt Hardy, just really took the whole tone of this pay-per-view down for me. I, I don't know what it was. I felt like I was watching a house show. I felt, and not the old school good house shows. I mean, the now house shows. It, this was just an odd... This is hands down easily AEW's worst pay-per-view. It was just their worst. Oh, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> I agree with. This was awful. <laughs> I agree, but I'm giving them a pass because they're still new to the game and how many bad WWE pay-per-views have we seen? So, yeah, they had a bad one finally, but I'm, I'm not going to kill them for that. It happens. But Rob mentioned a, a good point about NJF about being a heel because we were talking about great heels. I was going to ask this question. So go ahead. I'll let you go. Ahead. All right. Right now, who is the better heel, MJF or Bailey? Hmm. <laughs> I got to go with Bailey. So do I. Thank you. Thank you. Because not only, it, to me, is she great on the mic, and she's really found that heel character, but I think she's better in the ring than MJF right now. So I agree with you. Well, not only that, but what she did this past Friday was just so dastardly. It was just like, well, yeah. Well, I, he I, hasn't seen it. I, has, I haven't seen he it. He hasn't seen it. I have not watched SmackDown, but Mike did tell me what happened. So I'll go home and I'll watch it tomorrow. But even before I knew about that, I, I, I still would go Bailey. But now that just adds even more reason. Oh, why. man. That, that, that lit. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, but I think you're yeah. right. I think even before, maybe they were tied before this past Friday. But after this Friday. Oh, she took the she took the baton. She's the anchor. She's gone. She's running away with it. I couldn't say Ty because I don't think MJF has never really been able. Has never well. He had a good. Me. He's never impressed me in the ring, and that's the part that hurts him. Yeah, outside, I'll, I'll give you that. But, but the, with, inside the ring, no. What they did with him on Dynamite, though, with that ring and the way he beat the brakes off Moxley and, and the blood on all of his shirt. And the picture of him, you know, standing above Moxley, and he's got the blood all on his tank top. That was a good shot to me. And I think that made that that rose his his heel stock. Again, like I said, what Bailey did trumps what he did. Period. But um, yeah, this was definitely not. This was yeah. I I got to say this is probably their worst AEW's worst pay per view showing thus far. And, I, 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 you know, Rob's right. You're not going to hit a home run every time. You're just not. Especially in the times we live in with the pandemic. And I like what you said about the crowd reaction. That says a lot. You had fans. You actually had fans there. And the only time we heard them really was Chris Jericho's song. That's Darby Allen. And, and, Dar Dar and, and Darby did get a pop, too. Two times all night. And this was a four-hour show. Oh, God. That, that should tell you everything you need to know. But, you know, we, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't see into the future and know that it's going to be a shit show. And I, You know, as much as I wish I could, so we should, we should get this show. It's going to be bad. I, I like, I really like it. When, it I almost like when the show's bad because Rob comes with so much passion. Cause he hates them damn cinematics so much. I just don't like it. I just look, man, they're gonna stick around because apparently I'm in the minority. So I'm gonna have to get used to it, but I'm I'm gonna be honest in how I what I think of them. I haven't hated all of them, but I have hated most of them. It just happens that tonight they, they I thought they were bad. Yeah. All right, well, we we'll to wrap this. Make sure you check us out on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Third Generation Wrestling Podcast. And you can email us, email us at thirdgenwrestling at gmail.com. Hey, just always want to thank you, listeners. We appreciate you, and let's hear from you. Mr. Book, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. Make sure you listen to this podcast as well. 
Countdown Podcast. Again, enjoy your holiday. Take care, and we will speak to you all again next week.